Yeah, yeah, it's your boy Skino back with another episode of Free Play Radio. Today's guest, I got my guy Gunna Goes Global. How you feeling blessed, today, man? man? I'm feeling blessed. I'm feeling anointed. I'm feeling chosen. Nah, definitely, definitely. I appreciate you pulling up, fucking with sure. the platform. All time. But for the people that may be unfamiliar, where are you from and what brought you to music as the artistic outlet? I am a mascot of San Francisco, you feel me? A representative of the Bay, you feel me? A pillar in Filmo, iconic on the 800, you feel me? And what brought me to music, man? I would say the energy, for sure. Okay, so what did you grow up listening to? Motown. I grew up listening to Michael Jackson, Marvin Gaye, well, the Jackson 5. I grew up listening to Whitney Houston, Patti LaBelle. I grew up listening to Bob Marley, Prince. Mm -hmm. I grew up listening to a lot of old music because hip-hop wasn't played in my house. Mm, Okay. Can I ask for the reason why? I believe it was uh, during the early 90s, hip-hop was associated with something else, especially Mm. when you look at my grandmother's or our grandmother's Mm -hmm. uh, time. They came up more like in Sam Cooke, right. more of the James Brown. Right, right. So hip hop was it wasn't being interpreted the right way. Hmm. And then I feel like a lot of songs that were popular wise didn't have a lot of versatility, so they just associated it with with rebellion hmm. or violence. Okay. You feel okay. Me? So as far as like your recording process, just growing up with with that influence, how did that influence impact the way you record and the way you listen to music? Quality. Before any words are put on a beat by me, I, I gotta feel the beat. I gotta feel it in my soul, cause I'm not. I'm in the. Ha- I love hip hop, mm-hmm. but if you were to ask me, I'm more into rap, which I feel like comes from the heart, and mm-hmm. I feel like hip hop comes from the mind. Okay. So, hip hop to me are the lyricists, and rap are the storytellers. So, Tupac is a rapper. Mm. You feel me? Nas is a hip hop artist. Okay. Even though hip hop is the tree. You have different genres that fall that under, for sure. Okay, so you got a record that I want to get into. It's okay. called Blue Klux Klan. Definitely. What inspired that record, and why did you name it that? Unfortunately, I was on the way to Houston, and I had seen some uh, disturbing footage of a woman who I believe in. She happened to be in Texas. She was naked, and she ended up getting killed. Mm. And when I was on a plane, it had to be maybe 2019. I'm like, damn, it's a, it's a, it's a nonstop cycle in the media of black bodies being harmed even though they don't pose a threat Mm. so I reversed the roles I wrote that acapella and when I got to Houston shout out Lit Sherm I asked him like did he have a beat and he went through his he's a producer a Mm -hmm. reporter and an engineer he went through his like throwaway beats Mm. (laughs) and I think the second beat he played was that right like I was like a recording Right. And I went in there and I recorded it. So that, that definitely speaks to your recording process as well. It's like you definitely just have to feel the energy just to even lay the, lay the verse. Because you, you wrote it. You came with it written and prepared, but it's also just having that energy once you hear that song or once you hear the record, it's like, okay, this is going to fit. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. So I listen to Temples. I, I, again, like you just said, I listen to Energy. And mm-hmm. the reason why I named it Blue Klux Klan, of course, at the time, uh, I was thinking about Ku Klux Klan and then Blue Lives Matter, hmm. and then it's a you know it's almost it's not a pun. It, it, the, the Blue Klux Klan is me saying that the cops are Klan members. Hmm. Klan members are cop law enforcement just in general, and I've always felt like that because when you look at the slave patrols um, that became well slave, when you look at the the roots of policing, it comes from slave patrolling. Okay, and that's why to this day it's it's the same, it's the same vibes. Like you never heard white folks back in the day like, oh, I couldn't stand them. Hmm. Nah, because they protected land and white people, right? And then terrorizing black people, and it's the same thing going on today. Man, got you, got you. Now I appreciate that explanation for sure. So for the people that you know may not be following you, where can they find you on all social platforms, and where can they find your music at? The Gunna Goes Global on everything on earth. You know what I'm saying? That's how we come. The Gunna Goes Global. Okay. For culture. For sure. Let's get it. It's Free Play Radio. We got Gunna Goes Global, Blue Klux Klan. Let's get it. Lay, 
killed the cop like they did to me or rice no worries i told the judge i was in fear of my life he said young man why didn't you just run your honor i thought that he was reaching for a gun he said young man why didn't you just comply sandra bland already did and i didn't want to die he said what about the cop's life what about the cop's wife I said, it's not about that let's just focus on last night in fact let's talk about the fight he had in grade school in fact let's talk about everything that ain't cool like i heard his daddy had tickets and his kids wanted attention but he would never listen and i heard he got a dmf class i never would have shot him if he wasn't all that bad. see it's dangerous being black and we gotta think fast the judge shook his head but had some more to ask like what about your training and the oath you took your honor i'm a civilian i never read that book he said how could you kill him he was doing his job i feared for my life i thought i was finna get robbed he had a vest and a gun and was wearing all black truthfully i thought he was a criminal coming to attack the judge was in shock his look was profound I said it was an accident like oscar grant on the ground i was scared i got nervous i thought it was a taser he said how i said because i wrote it on the paper he said what about the video i said it's not what it appears the cop had complaints pending for some years he said, how was that relevant i said just let me finish his grandfather had warrants and his uncle was a menace he was late to work last week and divorced from his wife the judge said none of that validates taking a life i said you right i just put a you on y'all <laughs> i let my friends investigate the case so i could be home tomorrow, home tomorrow. Da -da -da. Phenomenal. Raimi, that's expensive. Standing in the rain with no cold, just a glide on me. No love, if it's love, I'ma rock with the stock on me. You know when it get real, I got the steel, it's my weaponry. And we be packing chrome, packing chrome, packing chrome. On his line like the phone, like a phone, like a phone. Really from the ghetto where we gotta play it raw. I patch on my face, they ain't see what I saw. Product of the streets, I'm a real outlaw. I'm quick to cook the beef, we won't even let it thaw. Standing in the rain, want no cold, just a glide on me. No love, if it's love, I'ma rock with the stock on me. And I was all alone, all alone, all alone. And I was all alone. back at it that was all alone from gunner goes global featuring Raimi. shout out Raimi, man he produced that thing and got on the track man oh man that's My crazy man. that's crazy i i have to say bro like and i and i know bro is doing his time right now but it's like gunner goes global you was the first gunner for sure for like just to be honest bro like probably like oh yeah. seven that's probably when i caught on to your music just sure. being a, a bay destrian you okay. feel me i just just want to give you your flowers for you've been doing this yeah. shit bro I appreciate that, yeah. man. I'm humbled by that. I'm yeah, humbled. off top, off top. But who who would you say your uh, biggest Im impact, like, who had the most impact, maybe personally or even creatively? Like, was it someone in your neighborhood? Was it some like, the family? Like, 
Who was like the my real older influence? brother is the reason I rap and my biggest influence is Tupac. So okay, it's, it's always been like that. The well, music, musically, I always knew I was gonna get in music once I saw the five heartbeats. But mm. as far as tangible, my older brother out mine. Okay, and then as far as like watching music, it was it was always Tupac. Okay, he shed so many tears. What is it about Tupac that really struck a chord with you? Because I'm pretty sure that was at a young age where you got yeah, into yeah. Pac. Baby. Uh, versatility I come from a family of revolutionists I come from a family of thinkers I come from a family of free minded black folks so when I heard Pac it, the music was cool but like I said the music was great but it, it penetrated in my spirit and then I was able to see glimpses of his interviews and of course of after his untimely death mm -hmm. I was able to study more of him and listen to his music when you listen to Tupac, it goes from one end of the spectrum to the other. And that's why people consider him the GOAT. It's like Muhammad Ali, even though he's been beat in the ring, he, he was so big outside of the ring. Right. And then if you bring it to basketball, I would say LeBron James. You, mm. know? you can put a lot of players against them, but when you look at the impact on the court and off the court, that's when it's no comparison. Right. And that's the same with Tupac. Uh, to get murdered at 25, it's people that 50 ain't talking like him. You know what I'm saying? Man. So, nah, definitely. Shout out yeah. shout out to Pac, you feel me? Top. Um, so. While we was off air, we was talking about, you know, you and Stunner Man, the tandem. Because mm -hmm. I've been following y'all just together. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out obviously Stunner separately, Man. but I've been following y'all together probably like what, 2019 y'all had in this thing? For sure. In this thing. And then, you know, how, how has that been? Because y'all got the project Fillmore. Mm -hmm. So even just how did that even come about and how does, has the relationship blossomed? Uh, it's just been organic. Baby bro was, uh, he was there when The Last Black Man in San Francisco was being written. Hmm. And he did something that I felt was very honorable. He was like, if y'all gonna make a movie about San Francisco, make sure Gunna is in it. And the casting director reached out to me. And for him doing that, it was like, hey, everything that I know, everybody that I know, anything I can do to help, we gonna do that. And it's been a two-way street. Mm -hmm. Because when I first met him musically, he been was talented, but... It wasn't, you know, he, he was growing as opposed to me being established. But I'm big on treating people with respect. Mm -hmm. And respect goes a long way. So for years, it was just like, okay, he dropping, I'm dropping, we dropping. And we just continue to be transparent with each other. Right, okay. And it's led to where we are today. Okay. Speaking of Last Black Man in San Francisco, like, you considered an actor now. Mm -hmm. Was that your first film? Mm, that was my Second film, my first film, I think, was an Eddie Murphy movie when I was probably like 10 or 11. I was an extra. I'm not even sure if it made the cut. And then I was in a few plays. My parents met at City College in acting class, so I come from art. Damn. Yeah, Culture Center, a whole bunch of VHSs in the 70s and 80s, and my parents at the Culture Center and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, what would you feel like is the, the I feel like the parallel between acting and rapping and like you know it all obviously falls under the umbrella of artistry but what is the parallels and what can you take from acting that you can apply to rapping and vice versa with me it's two different things I know I haven't delved as deep into acting over the years because even in the last black minute in San Francisco I got to play myself mm. and we got to improvise and we got to we actually got to write things that was in there so you like shaping acting. the movie yeah like when you look at us the reason why it's so organic the energy the language is because we wrote it mm. You know, if you look at the original script, well, I'm not going to say we wrote it. We improvised it. When you gotcha. look at the original script of us, the language is like early 90s hmm. L.A. Got you, got you. You feel me? I, I'm the one who had to really say, hey, we don't use these names no more, and we don't use none of the terminology. So we right. went in there and did our thing. But the movie, well, the script that we're working on now, and I would say you don't want to go in too deep. Just hmm. like with music, you want to be able to release, and you need to know what's, what's the difference between entertainment and reality. Right, and being, being able to like leave it on the court. Yeah, there. a lot of these dudes, um, shit, I'm rapping either what I've seen or what I've done. A lot of these dudes, they forget that they're entertainers. Hmm. And then next thing you know, they get hurt because they're playing too much. No, nah, that's definitely that's for sure. facts. Yeah. So speaking of the last black man in San Francisco, as far as like the rap scene when you was growing up and the rap scene now, what is like some of the, like the keen similarities and differences that you feel like? Opportunity. Back then, the opportunity was limited. You know, I'm talking about around the United States. You had to go through a certain channel to become successful. Now we got the internet. 
the city been hard. We we been talented. You know, Black San Francisco. We we been the truth. Mm. Uh, the Bay Area, but sp more specifically San Francisco, and more specifically Fillmore. We been hard. And when you fast forward to now, we just have more opportunity to take it to the next level of becoming gold selling artists, platinum selling artists, and ultimately diamond selling artists. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. So before I get into this record in the Bay, y'all got the the Bay hoodies. Mm -hmm. How's, how's that been coming along for you? Like, y'all got different colors. Like, what was it? Where did that idea come about? Was it with the out with the project, or it was inspired by Dirty Pesos? It was inspired by Dope Air. So mm. shout out to both of those clothing lines. But when the actual idea and song came about, it was I believe 2019. Mm -hmm. I was at a point where I was like, all right, I need a song that's bigger than me, mm. and then I need something that people can touch because no matter how big a song becomes i need something that we can touch that represents something more than me hmm. so when you hear in the bay yeah it may say gunna goes global stunning man on two but give it a few more months or a few more years that song is going to be bigger hmm. than the artist no different than welcome to atlanta that's bigger than Ludacris. that's bigger than jermaine dupree right so with the clothing it was more of a of course rockefeller I mean, Rockefeller had Rockaware. Of course, I remember when Master P was selling clothing. You understand? Mm -hmm. I remember uh, Eminem in his clothing. Tupac in his death, his uh, real estate, I mean, his estate had clothing. So I just, I, I remember Nelly and Vocal. So I said, nah, I don't want to go on a route and, and, and create clothing in my image, hmm. but I do want to create clothing. I get you. So then you got Dirty Pesos, you got... Uh, dope air, and then of course, unfortunately, uh, the late great Nipsey. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And I say unfortunately because he should be here in the physical form. So when you look at the marathon continues, even though that's directly associated with Nipsey, when you see that brand and that logo everywhere, it was bigger than him. Mm. So when I sat there, I was like, you know what? The Bay. Um, and of course, I thought about Mac Dre and E40 because they've always been big advocates of focusing on the Bay as opposed to Vallejo in their neighborhood. Mm. Wrote it down. Shout out to my graphic artist. Shout out to Ace. We revised it a few times. I got told no hella times. Like when I went to go meet people for to actually get it in production. And then that last time locked in with the right person and shit. It's been uh six figures. Man. We, we the trajectory, it'll be an eight figure company within the next twenty four months for sure. Nah, that's beautiful. And and shout out to I feel like before you even got into the story, you you, you you cited your your sources the inspiration just yeah. like you know you 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 humble enough to even do that but then also it's like you working it's in house you know you, shout out to Ace you mm -hmm. feel me like you working with your graphic designers but it's also you being considerate of the environment that you come from and not just film mode not just you feel me you None of that. it's inclusive yeah, and I man. feel like we need that type of representation in the Bay we need to acknowledge where we get our inspiration from and outside of the Bay just hip-hop culture in general and then American culture we don't need to colonize or Columbus everything man like keep it a buck I don't care what block you from what hood what city what state what country what air what century if I'm inspired by you I'm gonna give you your flowers you feel me in real time we gotta wait till nobody did so when you look at the Bay hoodie yes yeah, gone go where it needs to go you yeah. feel me but it wasn't like i just out of the blue i may have came up with the words but i was inspired by certain individuals that had hoodies and i was inspired by other artists in this beautiful genre called hip-hop that uh got into the clothing industry yeah and before we get into that record i just want to say it is okay to be inspired and it is okay yeah. to to highlight that and acknowledge it so shout out to you for even just being you know man enough to even do that bro i already knew it but just to be here and just hear you say it, bro. I appreciate it, bro. But stay, yeah. stay transparent out there, man. Don't be a sucker. Let's get it. In the Bay. And this was produced by Ramey, too, right? Shout out to Ramey. Yeah, me, me and him, we've been locked in, man. Shout out to Stunner Man 02 for being a player and introducing us. Oh, God. Let's get it. I got a question. We got eight toll bridges, nine counties, 101 cities in town. Where are we at? In the in the bay, we be like Richmond, Oakland, Frisco, EPA. In the bay, we be like Indias, Berkeley, Vallejo, San Jose. In the bay, we be like Richmond, Oakland, Frisco, EPA. In the bay, we be like Hayward, Pittsburgh. No, oh. 
quarter, I'm from Grove like I'm CJ hey, Stay on these niggas' lines, ain't no three-way Chase the sucker down, ain't no leeway Stay up out my motherfucking lane, this ain't no freeway uh, Yeah, I got a heart, but the love gone Don't feel emotion even when I hear a love song These niggas don't want smoke like the bug gone I leave niggas dripping like somebody left the tub on uh, Catch me in the ghetto with a stick I told her I'm a Mac, not a pimp My niggas in the field with a bip I'm an 800 nigga like a killer named Dip uh, She wanna be my bitch, but they all do uh, These niggas in they feelings like the bras do uh, You can't have my number, I'ma call you And if you talking about some chicken, I'ma fall through uh, She wanna be my bitch, but they all do